Welcome to day two of Embedded World in Nuremberg with us from uh, EE Times and Embedded.com with me, Nitin Dahad, and Anne Francoise Pelle, and also Sally Ward Foxton. Um, so we've been busy again today, uh, going around talking to lots of companies, seeing lots of demos. Sally's got some uh, interesting stuff, Anne Francoise has got some interesting uh, things to talk about. But um, I mean, if I start, uh, one of the themes sort of continuing from yesterday was around um, the uh, edge, edge intelligence, edge vision, and I talked to companies like um, uh, Silicon Labs and um, NXP today, and also other companies uh, looking at those areas. And I think, yeah, one of the things I'm seeing a lot is the IoT chips, and uh, Silicon Labs were talking about, for example, um, com coming to things like battery-powered AI uh, um, imaging, and then when I talked to Paul Williamson at ARM, they were talking more about the high-performance Linux-based uh, industrial stuff for IoT. Um, with NXP, I think it was more around the analog system thinking. We'd already covered the um, automotive um, uh, announcements last week uh, with EE Times, but I think it was all around um, more system thinking for analog and energy optimization. So I think those were the things, but um, there's more I can talk about, but. And Francoise, you had some interesting things. Well, I tried to concentrate my e well, my interviews around a common theme, um, security, and um, with the proliferation of IoT devices, um, we have more points of attack for uh, hackers. So I went to see Codasip to talk about hardware security um, because Codasip really thinks that we need to have um, built-in security within the processors. Um, so um, Codasip is a RISC-V founding um, member. And um, um, when I talked to uh, Brett Klein at Codasip, he said that um, IoT device makers are actually not always ready to have um, security at the heart of the processors. They don't, they're not ready to pay the extra dollars for that. Um, so there's some education around it. And um, so they have um, initiated um, the Secure 5, uh, Secure Risk 5, sorry, um, initiative. And they launched the Codacid Lab to support Risk 5 um, 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 international integration integration and to make sure that the um, uh, customers can integrate safe and secure cores. Interesting because um, I spoke to Daniel Cooley at Silicon Labs today and he was saying the opposite uh, when I asked him about you know, security on IoT because IoT is a focus. He was talking about, well, I said, are customers now designing with security in mind to begin with and are they paying for it? And he said, yes, they are looking to do that. So maybe, maybe it depends on the types of customers as well. Yes. So it's quite interesting. Sally, we'll come to you. So I went everywhere. Um, so today I really have seen everything from the very tiny to just about as big as it can be and, and still be called embedded. Um, so this morning I was at the Green Waves booth. I know we spoke about Green Waves yesterday. They won the award for their, for their part. Um, seeing the audio demos, um, they specialize somewhat in audio. Uh, so things like spatial audio, where you turn your head around and then the sound appears to come from different places. Super cool to be literally standing in the middle of an orchestra and look around and hear the different things. We have. I mean, I was absolutely blown away, absolutely loved it. Um, the chip is more specialized towards audio, but also neural network processing. Super, super cool. Um, on the big end, I went to another award winner, Eurotech. Um, Eurotech makes like industrial gateways, industrial edge boxes, um, and software for those. But they had on their booth the product that they won the award for is a system like this big. Uh, they have an Intel Xeon big CPU. They have like four NVIDIA PCI Express cards with the big GPUs on, and then they have this like liquid cooling in it. It's like it's like this big. You basically put it in the trunk of a car and then drive around to collect data and store the data, and then you can use the data to train your autonomous vehicle. I've never seen anything like it. It was it's so compact, uh, the power envelope and stuff. Like, I was absolutely blown away, so really good fun for me. You had an exclusive as well, didn't you? I am lucky enough to, uh, to get the scoop on this one, which is I was lucky enough to uh, thank you, Remy, and thank you, Miguel, uh, on the SD booth over at SD. So SD have this 
Oh, it's the STN32N6, so they're adding AI acceleration to their microcontrollers and dedicated AI acceleration. They've been talking about this part for a little while, but I'm the first now to see a demo of it. Um, they had a custom version of YOLO up and running, 300, more than 300 frames per second. Yeah, it was super cool, so if you want to find out all the details, uh, re keep reading EE Times. <laughs> and, uh, and Francoise, was there anything else that you uh, looked at that you wanted to cover? Yes, actually, so let's move from hardware security to software security. Um, I went to see a CEA spin out, Trust in Soft, and um, what's really interesting about them is that they're, they um, they combine the benefits of static analysis and um, um, dynamic source code, source code analysis. And um, because it's based um, on mathematics, um, the software is zero bugs. The results are guaranteed. And um, what they explain is that their solution um, um, enables um, no false negative, no false uh, positive, and no waste of time for the developers. Interesting. Um, coming back to Risk Five, I I saw quite a bit of the Risk Five community today. So I saw uh, Rick O'Connor, Open Hardware Group, and Callista Redman of um, uh, Risk Five uh, International. But also uh, I caught up with uh, Phil Dworsky at Sci Five, and uh, it's interesting where you you talk to some of these organisations, and they're very excited about adoption and and you know, sort of maturity. And Callista always talks about. Uh, m coming to maturity point, so I questioned her on that. So then we try to get beyond that conversation. Uh, but yeah, it is something that I think um, Risk Five is sort of uh, seeing a lot now. And, and when I talk to Sci Five, for example, with the, the space project and uh, and the Google TensorFlow, I think they they seem to be very sort of keen to sort of promote that. Despite, I mean, I did ask a few people about Intel pulling out of Pathfinder. Uh, for RISC-5, but uh, Phil at uh, Sci-5 and Callista basically said Intel is still committed to RISC-5, but not that program. Okay. Uh, so I think it's quite interesting. Um, <laughs> there's stuff we're going to be covering in embedded.com and EE Times so, uh, on that RISC-5, so we'll see that later, and I've got some podcast interviews as well with Embedded Edge. Uh, but the other real sort of couple of interesting companies, and I think I mentioned these before, MicroE, which is oppos opposite to us, uh, uh, the booth over there, and um, one of the things I think I've always uh, been quite a fan of is when you democratize the, ac uh, the access to technology, and, and they're doing it in a really good way, and one of the things, for example, you can use one line of printf code to see uh, the data on any of your sensors or boards anywhere in the world, and that's quite amazing. I mean, he showed me that, going to be writing about that. And then um, natural language processing for uh, getting any design queries to get the answers to those. Uh, so I think you know, it's kind of a chat GPT uh, for, um, for a design. Um, not going to go on more, but uh, I also met a company called Numonda, which is the new Kimonda. So we will uh, definitely be covering that. They've got an announcement next week. Uh, memory testing, at a tenth of the price of what you can do. But yeah, some exciting stuff today. Uh, anybody else want to say anything else? It was fun. I'm looking forward to being tomorrow. <laughs> Sally? So much more still to see for me. I haven't even been to the tiny ML booth yet. So, yeah, tomorrow, certainly, yeah. Tune in again tomorrow to hear the rest. Well, we've certainly been getting a lot of questions since uh, yesterday's uh, 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 you know, daily rep. So, yes, I'm hoping we've raised some more to today. Uh, until tomorrow, uh, we'll, we'll see you again at Embedded World. Thank you. <laughs>